good morning everybody today we'll discuss about differential pcm coding scheme dpcm in short to understand why differential pcm and what may be the possible uh, advantages that we can expect i'm starting with one feature of speech signal trying to bring out a desired feature which is present in speech signal so we'll see later that dpcm is favored very much for speech kind of signal though in general it may not be suitable for any kind of signal now speech samples now that we know about pcm i can talk about the samples so if you consider briefly the input samples samples at uh, sampled at the appropriate nyquist rate or even a little bit higher than that like that 8 kilo samples per second as we considered for pcm these samples for speech signal they do not change very fast from sample to sample okay that's the nature of the speech signal so if i consider two consecutive speech samples coming out from the sample and hold circuit uh, it is unlikely that the two sample values will be widely different now, this feature which is very much so specific to the speech kind of signal i am trying to present here in this graph where i am plotting what is called as the auto correlation function okay uh, r of tau where tau basically indicates a time interval of correlation which is the independent variable along the x axis to be specific for speech signal I have indicated some specific values i am considering say i mean tau being in microsecond and these points say this may be at 125 microsecond 250 microsecond 375 microsecond and like that okay mathematically this autocorrelation function if i carry out on the discrete samples discrete time samples okay then it would look something like this i guess some of you are already familiar with this this kind of expression of autocorrelation okay so the autocorrelation function for special kind of random process we define such parameters for random processes okay when we say the random process is stationary uh, the autocorrelation function can be indicated in terms of the deferral uh, time difference like r of tau is in general the expectation of x of t1 and x of t1 plus tau what does it mean well x is a discrete random process that means this is a statistical average when to get a particular value of r of tau for a specific value of tau okay then say for example tau for 125 microsecond okay then for speech samples i have got speech samples coming one after another okay as if at the input of a quantizer or some processor then i am considering the samples one by one okay and i am also considering the samples which are delayed or forwarded either way tau may be positive or negative by one unit okay 125 microsecond so i am considering the next sample first okay then i am trying to find in this expression it is a statistical averaging really okay if you are doing it practically then you need not wait for the probability really because you are getting the samples as per the probability from a real speech source okay so if you go on multiplying them and add them really find the average of that that's what is a autocorrelation function so statistically this is the expectation of the samples and fixed delayed version of the samples okay where tau is the fixed delay okay and more uh, elaborately this may come out to be like this where I have again brought in some kind of joint probability expression. Okay, p of x t one comma x t two. The prob otherwise, how do we perform expectation really? The set or averaging operation. So, the general expression is like this, where expression is like this again for stationary kind of uh, uh, random processes. There are random processes which are not even stationary, and for them, the expression is even more general. I don't need it at the moment. Okay. Yes, please. Hmm. Yeah. Right. 
bring out this expression right it's not t2 which is varying really it's x t2 x t2 which is varying x t1 and x t2 are the random uh, variables here okay so they are varying between minus infinity and plus infinity no not necessarily x t2 is a random variable okay suppose you have decided to observe uh, the present set of samples and the samples delayed by 5 samples 5 sample time okay so again you will get the same set of samples for the same process okay but delayed this time by 5 units so tau indicates that 5 sample unit interval okay so tau i uh, considered it like this t2 is t1 plus tau okay you could consider minus tau also so here xt1 and xt2 as if they are random variables coming from two uh, random processes and for this example i am considering that the two random processes are identical one okay the same speech source so, 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 so. now the interesting point is that this autocorrelation function for speech signal has a shape like this okay and i have drawn it this is an approximate one this is i mean uh, a typical one you can say it is not that for any speech signal it has to exactly follow this curve really there will be variation but this gives us more or less a basic idea which is necessary for our dpcm scheme okay it is interesting to note that this autocorrelation value dies down rather fast so beyond a few sample interval time of say if i if i consider this as a first sample interval okay where tau is 125 microsecond because we know usual rate of sampling for pcm kind of signal is 8 kilo samples per second what does it mean the sampling inter sample interval is fixed and that is 125 microsecond so if tau is 0 okay then it reduces to a simpler expression but what is that really if you can guess quickly i am finding the square of the samples really and expectation of that that is the power of the signal that's a very interesting property really okay so when there is no delay okay between the two random uh, samples that i'm getting it but if i consider the samples and find their expectation that's the autocorrelation with a delay of one sample which is 125 microsecond then i find the autocorrelation value comes from 1.0 to a value which also is quite appreciable it usually varies between 0 0.79 and 0 0.87 so typical value may be 0 0.87 0 0.85 kind of thing okay so this means that two consecutive samples okay they are quite uh, close to each other really whereas if i consider tau equal to two sample interval of 250 microsecond the value comes down steadily and if i consider a delay tau of more than say four five or six sample interval the value of correlation will be very very small okay which means loosely that if you are interested in a specific speech sample and if you have somehow missed it okay for some reason then even if you get the next sample you may say that okay you have got more or less a good estimate about good idea about what the previous sample was do you get me okay or in a reverse manner if you are observing a sample at a particular instant of time you can very well guess what is going to be the amplitude roughly of the next sample which has not yet come okay yes yes not no if it is not less than that if it is more then what we expect is that this curve will be shrinking perhaps really okay and the, these values will be at one sample interval delay where the sample interval will no, not be 125 microsecond maybe less 80 microsecond this value will go up closer towards one okay so if i sample closer so i don't miss much between two samples that's the idea okay whereas if i uh, consider say one sample and try to guess what is going to be the seventh sample from that instant of time i don't get much information because i find the correlation profile dies down towards zero value really is that okay so this is one interesting feature which we can make use of and we try to make use of this in the design of differential pcm scheme b 
DPCM in short, differential PCM. We can guess perhaps a little bit. Even if I explain, do not explain this diagram and ask you to think about utilizing this feature and use your known technique of PCM of quantization, sampling, quantization, etc. Uh, you perhaps can guess about what is this differential PCM going to look like. Any quick attempt? When you compare one sample with the previous one. Right. So then you pass on the difference. Right. This way you uh, can reduce the bit rate, the number of bits to be passed. You can get a higher quality because the difference can be encoded in eight bits. Right. Okay. So his suggestion uh, is that, I mean, uh, instead of uh, coding after instead of quantizing the full sample really wait okay wait for the next sample and when you get the next sample then you find the difference of these two and then send encode or quantize quantize and then encode this difference signal it's a good starting point really okay but then one slight point he is missing is that uh, he is not uh, taking advantage of the previous sample which has been a previous group of two samples which have already been transmitted and after quantization etc. Would you like to uh, make use of those samples really? Just to simplify, his idea is that okay, consider the present sample, consider the next sample and find the difference, enco uh, quantize and encode this difference signal. Okay, Then he is not taking advantage of the previous encoded output or the previous two samples I should say. Should that also be tried? Possible like in the previous encoded samples, we can just change some bit. Pardon? Okay. Yeah? So like, let's say, for any, any sample, mm -hmm. so I have a bit pattern, I have a code word. Right. So for the next, next sample, I get. Right. So if I'm starting again from the question, I'm making a code word. In that previous code word, I make some changes. Uh, what is the basis of making that changes? Is so it? Yeah, difference. The difference will be again the basic making of changes. Where the difference is occurring, those bits will change. So I will change the whole, starting the whole code word. In fact, uh, uh, before talking about the bits, let us think uh, in terms of the uh, signal samples and the quantization process really. What you are talking about is at the output of the encoder perhaps, okay, that is the ultimate thing. There will, there have to be certain changes in the differential form really. Okay, I think I will get to the uh, scheme that is followed in the name of differential PCM, okay. His guess was quite good really, but uh, maybe we get something better if we follow this structure. Where? As you can see, this is the input point and the input that I am considering is the sampled input speech signal sampled at a rate, say nominally at Nyquist rate or a bit little bit higher than the Nyquist rate. So typically for speech maybe 8 kilo samples per second, okay. So that is the input to this DPCM coder or differential pulse code modulator equivalently. I am calling this input as X. KTS, what do I mean by that? This is the kth sample, k is a running variable, okay. So the kth sample is going in, going in and then I am getting some input from somewhere, okay. This block I am labeling as predictor, it is trying to predict what this x KTS would have been. How is it predicting? Any quick guess? By making use of that correlation kind of feature of the signal. Okay. The decoder or the modulator knows that it is a speech signal which is coming and hence it can assume certain feature of the speech signal. Okay. After assuming those features, the predicted is somehow coming out with a predicted version for this kth input sample and that I am calling as the predictor output denoting as x cap kts. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. This coder <laughs> is designed, okay, where it is likely to exploit that correlation feature for the input signal, okay. So this coder knows that the input is going to be speech sample. So it exploits that correlation feature, okay, and it tries to predict what this kth input sample is going to be, okay. That Prediction from the predictor again is a sample, is a discrete time prediction, okay. I am calling as X cap KTS. So, this is the predicted output, okay, 
which is a prediction for the kth sample which is just coming. That means I am ready with my prediction about what the next sample is going to be. Okay, but this prediction may be bad, may be good. Okay, and we can guess that the prediction should be good if that autocorrelation profile is a desired one. Okay, if there is high autocorrelation, typically as I said, 0.8 or 0.87 between the two samples. Okay, if there uh, there is hardly any difference between the two samples. Okay, and if the previous samples were also well behaved one, then this predictor output is expected to be close to XKPS. Okay, so that the difference, this is summer, okay, with this uh, notation here, the difference from this of these two signals, which I am indicating as E P K T S, E P, use this suffix of P to indicate, to call this parameter as the predictor error, E P K T S is again an error sample, which is the error because the predictor could not predict this kth sample completely, exactly. So there has been an error and that error I am calling as E P K T S. Okay. Now, a very interesting feature is that this error, this prediction error is actually taken into the quantizer. Here is a difference compared to our PCM system. In the PCM system, the input speech sample was taken into the quantizer and the quantizer could be in a simple form, the linear quantizer or uniform quantizer or it could be a kind of log PCM kind of quantizer, okay, as we have read. That is a secondary issue, but the input signal to the quantizer is not the direct input sample, speech sample, but it is the prediction error signal which, which goes into the quantizer, okay. And then the output of the quantizer, I am calling as EQKTS, I am using the suffix Q to indicate that this is the output from the quantizer. So the quantizer works on the, on some kind of error signal. Okay, and gives the corresponding quantized version of that because that it is a quantized output is in being indicated here by the suffix Q. So it is EQKTS. Okay, and then if I do not have to worry about the prediction, like we did in case of PCM coder, this quantized output should be taken into the encoder. Okay, so this is the encoder. I am considering a binary encoder. Okay, for simplicity, and the encoder output may be in a serial form or in a parallel form just for a change, I am indicating them as a parallel word output, okay. You could as well put them in a serial form, does not matter really, depending on how it is necessary in this next block. Anyway, I am calling this encoder output as V of KTS. So, this is the, this is the DPCM coder output or the modulated signal. Now, for prediction, this quantized output is considered and this is added see this plus signs here added with the previous prediction to generate the next input to the predictor, okay. So UKTS is X cap KTS plus EQ KTS, okay. UKTS which is the input to the predictor is the sum of the previous prediction and the corresponding quantizer output. This is the scheme. So, EP will be more accurate. EP will be more accurate than EP. So Let us wait uh, uh, to find an expression for X cap KTS. Okay. We will find that. I mean, uh, ultimately, this configuration results in a better uh, result. I mean, better performance. So, I am introducing the uh, description of the parameters here. EPKTS, as I said, is the kth input to the quantizer, kth input to the quantizer, which is the difference of the actual input speech sample XKTS and the corresponding predictor output X cap KTS. Okay. And X cap KTS is the prediction of the kth input sample. Some of the predictor is predicting what this kth input sample would look like. 
and EQKTS is a quantizer output for the kth prediction error. That is EQKTS is the quantizer output for this input EPKTS, which is the kth prediction error. This is the kth prediction error. Okay. In general, depending on the quantizer that you would like to use, a uniform or non-uniform, a logarithmic, etc., there will be a relationship between EQKTS and EKKTS. Okay, I'm indicating in general by this function C of E EPKTS. E is missing here. EPKTS. Some function, maybe linear, maybe non-linear. Yeah. Minus x, uh, x cap of k minus 1 ts. I have some, some uh, already determined predict, uh, predictive value, which is based on the previous function. Right. So, I can't, but I can't have the same predictive value, which is actually for that function. That's a good point, really. That's a point of confusion, really. I mean, uh, what he says is that, I mean, this error, this prediction error, should it not be this x k t s minus x cap k minus 1 t s. Because his point is, see x cap k t s cannot depend on x k t s. Why? Just for un understanding, because no, his point is that x cap k t s cannot depend on x k t s, the kth input sample. Uh, it can depend only upon x k minus 1 k t s, it, it may also depend x k minus 2 t s, it can also depend on x k minus 3 t s, all previous samples, but it cannot depend on the present sample or the sample which is expected just now, right? Pardon? X is a random sample, so we don't know x k t s, that is going to arrive. X is a random signal, yeah. So this error is actually the error by the in the prediction of the uh, predictor, like uh, what it was predicting that next element would be. Right. And That's uh, what I define. I said. So uh, it has to depend upon the previous element, mm -hmm. and then it's taking the previous element into account to find the new value, and that it is subtracting to get the error. This yes. error would be basically the error defined. Error right. EPKT, yes, yeah. It is the error by the in the prediction, it is not actually the error in the signal. No, or no right. question of error in the signal. Huh? Okay. So, you are correct. So, in that sense, sir, that is why I am calling this error as prediction error. So, the definition is okay. So in a way, the prediction oh, predicted value is ready. Okay, so he is supporting my definition, but yeah. his point is still not clear, clarified. Yeah, huh. in a way, the predicted value is ready before the KS sample. The KS predicted value is already. There before the KS sample. Ah, yeah. So that is why it cannot depend on what is coming in later. No. Is it not that we. Pardon? So the X cap KTS was based on X cap Right. Well, I mean, uh, is it that you learnt about some kind of causal system? Huh? Nobody talks about that. See, in a very natural form, is it not that we are talking about all causal system really? I mean the input source, uh, source, etc. I mean I, I cannot use that really because the kth sample has not yet been generated. So I cannot come out with a predictor which can make use of that really. Unless I assume of course that all these speech samples have been produced beforehand, okay, and they are stored somewhere so that we can design this predictor, etc. That is also done sometimes, but not in our example at least. Okay, so. Coming back to the point really to uh, clarify his point, see please note that it uh, largely depends on how we are, you are defining. The way I am defining x cap k t s is the prediction of the kth input sample. Okay. If you like to make it more explicit, you could say x cap k minus 1 t s to indicate that x cap is generated from k minus 1 t s, k minus 2 t s, etc. Okay. But then in the same expression here, I had to use x k t s and x cap k minus 1 t s unnecessarily. See, I am I'm saying that this is the prediction of the kth input sample. 
I am not saying that it incorporates the actual kth input sample to come out with this value. Okay, so I am not val validating that basic assumption of causality of the sample of the signal and the system, but I am not validating anything also. And now if you ask me, sir, how do you get this x cap kts? I will say obviously by looking at the previous samples, a uh, previous u k, k minus 1 ts, k minus 2 ts, etc. Okay, so th there is no conflict I believe. Sir, uh, yes. Uh, the predicted knowledge about the signal yes. is uh, contributing that uh, all the ensemble basically. Whatever. Once again, yeah, as a good observation. So yes. The predictor knows about what, uh, like, what is the probability, and uh, this is how it is finding out what the next signal would by knowing the autocorrelation. Well, this design of the predictor, I think the predictor is a very interesting component that you are already finding out, really. Okay. Design of this prediction is a very important area of uh, work and even research, so to say, for designing of this kind of differential uh, coders, decoders. Okay. So as he, he mentions, I mean he uh, indicates that he would like to use the probability uh, history of the input sample really. The point is that you get, a, you have got a rough idea about the behavior of the speech signal, but you never know about the exact PDF etc. for the particular speaker. And the point is that you should not design a system for one speaker that way. So what you have actually is a rough idea about the overall behavior like that ACF autocorrelation function I showed there. I said the typical value is 0.8 or so, usual value is between 0 0.79 and 0 0.87 for one, sam one sample delay, but there is no certainty really. For some user it may be even different, a little bit different. Point is that it may be, it need not be even between 0 0.79 and 0 0.87. For a particular speaker this value at this point, at one sample interval may be even 0 0.88. There may be variation, but that variation is going to be very uh, narrow and usually it will be within this range of 0 0.79 to 0 0.87. So what you get is not exact probability distribution, but not, I mean fairly dependable idea about that. So, so how will, uh, we, we cannot say that the predictor output is exactly dependent upon the previous element. There are some other elements also included which may be even. I guess some of those elements, his point is that this predictor output need not be even dependent only on the previous samples it may even get dependent on something else, he has a point. Can you guess quickly? He has a point because I can clearly see some kind of feedback system arrangement here, isn't it? Okay. And his point, if I now try to translate, is that this output need not be a function of the previous inputs only. Should it not be a function of this, this parameter as well, this quantizer? Pardon? The initial value is yeah, initial value is one aspect, one issue. Okay, and then maybe the behavior of the quantizer also. Okay, so yes, there may be an other issues, but not many other issues really. Once this scheme we uh, design, really. okay, we'll see that. I mean, uh, it mostly depends on the input samples. We'll see that. Okay, the way it has been designed and it has been uh, used here. Yeah. Sir, what is the better if you feed the XKTS to predict rather than the XKTS? So are you trying to make this error zero? Sir? Are you trying to make this prediction error zero? Sir, as possible. Sir, trying to make the input at the predictor city. The input at the predictor. The error in Q zero or um, in U uh, zero? But that that sample after delaying, do I use it for uh, uh, the next prediction? My simple point is that if the sample is available, then why do you go for prediction at all? Right. Sir, see the predictor has a role. It is not the difference between two consecutive samples. Sir, see the predictor does not, yes please. Uh. Sir, the UKTS has some error because of the quantizer. 
the which is the signal fed it uh, fed into the predictor has some error produced because of the quantizer right uh, output right so it's basically why don't we feed directly the xkts into the predictor which will predict uh, the next fed that's what that's what last time so his suggestion is okay that instead of feeding this u of kts here directly why not we feed the samples directly to this predictor over here is that okay okay and then what do i do so for the next sample so we get a value again when we compare it to the sample itself agree to one point at least that this predictor should it come out with the predict an output at any instant of time based on all previous inputs or or uh, it has to uh, only find the difference of two consecutive samples etc which you were suggesting sometime back i think if it makes use of the previous sample values really okay in a best in a good way then th that should be good really because ultimately speech samples are correlated at least to a certain interval all the previous samples won't it become delta modulation we are here to talk about delta modulation okay yeah yeah there the fundamental difference between delta modulation and this dpcm is that at dpcm it is sufficient to have the samples input samples at the nyquist rate even that is 8 kilo samples per second is good enough for speech for dpcm for delta modulation it is not sufficient really okay there it is highly over sampled okay so that you can directly subtract two consecutive samples in fact we can see that this delta modulator in a sense is a kind of a one bit dpcm that's one way of interpreting this uh, delta modulator really. we'll talk about that sometime later okay coming back to this point really i mean let's wait for some time let's uh, let's see i mean what we achieve by this really okay in fact you also have to think about the corresponding uh, uh, demodulator configuration okay so let's wait for a little bit on that <coughs> okay so uh, eqkts is the quantization output for the kth prediction error so let me complete this so i'm defining the quantization error okay now quantization error is qkts eqkts is the quantizer output because the quantizer input itself is defined as some kind of prediction error signal so the output of the quantizer also i said that okay let it be e e of kts but ep kts e, uh, eqkts output so i'm defining the quantizer quantization error as qkts quantization error for the kth sample as q of kts for the kth input sample in this notation my basis is always the input sample input speech sample so qkts is a quantization error for the kth sample and hence i may write that the quantizer output is the quantizer input which is the prediction error epkts plus q of kts you could write minus also okay q of kts so as per this configuration we can now write an expression for the input to the predictor okay the input to the predictor i noted as ukts and as per the diagram ukts is the sum of the prediction for the kth sample and the quantizer output eqkts okay and this eqkts the quantizer output just now we wrote an expression for that so reproducing that from equation 3 we can write that the input to the predictor u of kts is x cap kts plus ep kts because eqkts as per equation number 
was EPKTS plus QKTS. The quantizer output was the quantizer input plus the quantizer noise, quantization noise. So, U of KTS input to the predicted is the predicted output for the kth sample plus the corresponding quantizer input EPKTS plus the quantization error. Okay. Now, what is the sum of first two parameters? The predictor output and the prediction error. What, the, what is these two? What is the sum of these two? It is the input speech sample really. Okay. Yeah. So, the sum of these two is the input k speech sample really. Okay. And hence, the input to the predictor actually is the speech sample okay, and the corresponding quantization noise. Please note here, coming back to his doubt really which he had, this u of kts, the way I am introducing this uh, notations here, this u of kts is not used to generate x cap kts, u of kts is used to generate x cap k plus 1 ts. Is that okay? Hmm? So, all these notations EPKTS is that prediction error for the kth input sample. X cap KTS is a predictor output for the kth, kth input sample. Okay. QKTS is a quantization error for the kth input speech sample. Okay. But this U of KTS generates X cap K plus 1 TS when fed to the predictor. Okay. Now, but do you find anything interesting in this equation 4? The input to the predictor is essentially the actual speech sample plus some quantization error. And as somebody guessed some time back that this quantization error uh, perhaps may be uh, uh, in a better form compared to the quantization error in a corresponding PCM scheme. If I would have used the same quantizer okay, and would have used a simple PCM scheme feeding XKTS directly here the kind of quantization error that I would have found okay, is likely to be much larger compared to the quantization error that we are now talking about perhaps. So, this QKTS is not necessarily is not very large. Okay. So, there is some interpretation about this last equation. We can say, can we say that QKTS, the input to the predictor is essentially a quantized version of XKTS. Agreed. The input samples to the predictor, okay, they are nothing but some quantized version of the input speech samples. Okay. So, what is essentially fed to the predictor input is a quantized version, version of the input speech sample. Pardon? EQ KTS. EQ is the quantization error. It is output. Output, yeah. Yeah, discrete levels. Yeah. Is there any approximation in this U KTS? See, U KTS is a quantized version of X KTS. Is X KTS quantized? No. Okay. That quantization error is quantized. I mean, Q KTS is the difference one. Okay. We know that it is limited to plus minus step size. Okay. X KTS is not a quantized one signal really. So, is it necessary that U KTS, U KTS, I mean, I am saying that this is a quantized version of X KTS in the sense that, I mean, it is quite close to X KTS. Actually, if you look back at this diagram, this output predictor, his, is his question understood? His point is this UKTS, is it ultimately a quantized parameter? What is the answer?
it is very close to the input signal okay and that's why i said quantize jla because it depends on how i mean nicely we are designing this whole system see this predictor output its idea is to catch up with this input sample and we we would like that it catches up as much as possible so that this e p k t s is very very small towards that it is preferable at least conceptually that we do not quantize this x cap k t s is it not because the input sample is not quantized so if i i mean just for what simplification i quantize it arbitrarily then i may not catch up to this uh, difference value i can may not be able to make it to zero very close to zero really so towards that this need not be quantized but the point remains that if you are implementing this whole thing in using digital uh, devices really at some point of time you would like to quantize this again okay but this quantization level you have to decide really if you consider more number of levels for representing this x cap then you are targeting to make this ep very very smaller very close to zero okay so that's more of a design issue really the point here is that you have because unless this is a because x cap kts need not be a quantized one it should always try to catch up x kts okay so what is quantized is eq kts okay by this i simply meant that this u kts is a very close version of x kts because this will help us in visualizing uh, a structure about the corresponding demodulator or decoder the essence here is that u k t s is a very close version of x k t s like in pcm we said a quantized version is good enough with little bit of quantization error we accept the signal pass it through a low pass filter to get back my signal isn't it so something like that u k t s may also be useful for us now a few notes here we can see that if the prediction is good that means x cap kts is fairly close to x kts for all k's for all k's not for any specific k and then it it is lost if for all k's i mean x cap kts is very close to x kts that is the corresponding prediction error ep kts then is likely to be small okay so i'm saying if the prediction is good then we can hope to make this ep kts very small and hence a variance because the pkts again is some random discrete variable okay this variance of this epkts can you expect that this is going to be much smaller compared to the variance of the input signal xkts okay because variance fundamentally gives me a span about how much uh, they are wide off from the mean value is it not and if i assume that the input samples are have got a zero mean which is the case for speech signal okay without any dc so if just uh, for a quick explanation if i try to sketch the pdf for the speech signal input samples xkts and if it is something like this with a mean of zero the sample value these sample values are all allowed but the probability is less and less okay then the variance one can plot in terms of the standard deviation and we can say that well, the standard deviation is something like this or twice of that now my point here is that if i plot the pdf for epkts then the span or the width of this pdf curve is going to be much narrower compared to the previous width really. so if i plot along the same x axis the same amplitude scaling of millisecond or whatever it is then we can say we can predict that this pdf curve for this epkts is going to be narrower the black one compared to the original speech signal because that's what is the meaning of pdf really i can say that an amplitude of error magnitude this much is very unlikely though this much amplitude in the input signal was very likely is it not so i think this observation also is fine is valid that the variance of prediction error epkts is much less than the variance of xkts provided the predictor is designed nicely the prediction is good okay oh it's almost time oh, it's just half a minute what does that mean it means that <coughs> so the variance of the error signal which goes into the quantizer 
is much smaller compared to the input speech samples. So we can see that for a given number of bits per pitch sample, you can now try quickly comparing an a PCM scheme with the same quantizer as I noted in today's diagram, say which uh, uses say n bits to represent one sample, okay, then you can say that for that kind of quantizer and encoding scheme, the DPCM will produce a quantization error QKTS whose variance will be much lower compared to that of a PCM coder. If I would have thought of a PCM coding scheme using this quantizer and this encoder for the input speech sample, okay, whatever would be my quantization error and the variance of the error really, now it will be much less for the corresponding DPCM system. So this lower variance, I just wanted to remind you that lower variance of the quantization error signal means lower quantization error power as well. That means for a good predictor, we can hope to reduce the quantization error, quantization noise power, we can hope to reduce it considerably compared to a PCM codec producing same number of bits per sample or alternatively we can say that to ensure a specific signal to quantization noise ratio, if somebody asks me to design some codec ensuring some SQNR of some value say 35 dB or 40 dB, then if I choose a DPCM scheme, I may ensure that SQNR even with a lower bit rate with less number of bits per sample. That means lower bit rate compared to a PCM system. So here is an option, okay. DPCM gives you an option for either improving the SQNR after coding or equivalently you can reduce the bit rate by following this differential approach compared to a corresponding PCM coding so scheme. Yeah, please. The question, yeah, a little bit, but how much is that is the next diagram. I think we will uh, uh, keep it for the next day. Think about the corresponding structure for the demodulator. Okay. The answer lies there. Yes. Some amount of increase in complexity will be there because the predictor has to be designed. Thank you very much.